How accessible are the tabs in WordPress and how do we test for accessibility? That's what we'll be looking at in today's video. So if you're interested, let's jump right into it. According to the WebAIM 2024 Screen Reader User Survey, interactive elements are the second most problematic items that can be found on a web page. So what are interactive elements? Interactive elements include menus, tabs, and dialogues. So why are tabs or tabbed interfaces part of the list of items that tend to be problematic? Well, you can consider a tabbed interface as a table of contents widget that has been heavily modified. In a standard table of contents, you have a set of links that direct your focus to some sections on the page. But in a tabbed interface, you have a set of links or buttons, but then they show or hide a section one at a time. And they heavily rely on JavaScript to make all of this happen. The second thing is that they change the standard controls. So to move between the tab list, you go with the left or right arrow key for the horizontal tab list. While to move from the tab list to the tab panel, you use the tab key. So because of all of these changes, you also have to consider the screen reader user and relate those changes adequately to them using other name, roles, and values. So most people tend to forget one or two of these items and that causes a problem either for keyboard users or screen reader users. So in today's video, I hope you can follow along. I will be showing you how to test a tab for accessibility. So you can pause the video right here and make sure you get these three free items. The first is Google Chrome. Second is NVDA for the screen reader testing. And the third is Axe DevTools for automated testing. So now we'll jump right into the page that I've created. For the HTML, we can use one of three patterns for the tab list. The first is the standard pattern, which consists of a div and a set of buttons. The div has the role equal to tab list and the button has the role equal to tab. Then outside of it, we have the set of tab panels. So they are divs with a role equal to tab panel. They can be wrapped in a container or a wrapper div. It doesn't matter because in the accessibility tree, these divs are ignored as long as they don't have a role. So alternatively, you can use a set of UL LI tags. The UL will have the role equal to tab list and the LI will have the role equal to tab. Then the tab panels will remain the same. Then for an enhanced version, we can use a set of UL LI A structure. So the UL will have the role equal to tab list, the LI, and then the A will have a role equal to tab. To avoid problems, we have to apply a role equal to presentation or role equal to none on the LI because once the UL is changed to a role equal to tab list, the LI no longer have a UL parent because it is no longer a UL but a tab list in the accessibility tree. So the LI will be dangling and the tab should generally be direct descendant of the tab list. So to fulfill those two conditions, we just set a role equal to presentation or role equal to none on the LI and then that basically gets it removed from the accessibility tree. The purpose of the enhanced version is to ensure accessibility even for people who don't have JavaScript turned on. So basically, all of these roles and area controls and the rest are added programmatically using JavaScript. So when there is no JavaScript enabled on the person's browser, those things no longer exist and then it returns back to a simple table of content structure where you have a UL, LI, and an A with an href all of the other things will disappear, so there will no longer be any role equal to tab list, role equal to presentation, and the rest. I learned this trick from Kevin Powell, and he showed how to do it. I will leave a link to the video in the description, so you can go and check it out. But yeah, that is how the HTML should be structured. Then as we go along, I will show you 
that all of these things are also necessary and I'll show you why they are necessary. So now you can go ahead and inspect your own tabbed interface on your website. I'll show you how to do it and then you can check to see if there's anything missing and you can leave it in the comment section what your own is missing. To test the HTML of the tabbed interface, all you have to do is go into the tabbed interface, right click and then choose inspect. To take you into the dev tools, then make sure that you're using one of those three patterns. So we have first a div with a class equal to tabs container. That is the wrapper div. It's not very important, but it's nice to have it there to show that clear distinction. Then within that div, we should have a UL because in this case, I'm using the enhanced version. If you're using any of the other patterns, make sure that it follows the same structure as those patterns. Here we have a UL with a role equal to tab list. Inside that, we have the LIs with a role equal to presentation. In your case, it might be a role equal to tab because you are using the second pattern. But if that is the case, then there must not be an A tag inside. If there's an A tag, then the LI must have a role equal to presentation or role equal to none. So the A tag now has the role equal to tab. Then underneath all of the tab lists, you get the tabs panel. In my case, I wrapped it in a div, but it's not that important. And then within that, we now have each of the individual tab panels having a role equal to tab panel. To show the relationship between the tab panel and each of the tabs within the tab list, we use two area informations, which are the area controls and the area labeled by. Basically, on each of the individual tabs, we should have an area controls which points to the ID of the tab panel that it controls. Because as a visual user, you can ideally see that each of these tab list items is controlling the tab panel visually. But the screen reader user may not know that relationship between the tab panel and the tab itself. So we use that area controls to say that this tab is controlling this tab panel. Then we also have to now do the inverse relationship for the tab panel itself. So for each of the tab panels, we now give it an area labeled by which points back to the ID of the tab that controls it. So there should be that bidirectional relationship between the tab and the tab panel. Then since we are using JavaScript to select a tab and then show the tab panel, we have to now give that information to the screen reader user as well using the area selected. So whenever one of these tab list items is selected, it should convey that information to a screen reader user. So that's why on each of the tabs, you get this area selected. So now this is the one that is selected currently. If you go to the A tag there, you see an area selected equal to true. But for the others, you see area selected equal to false. That is for screen reader users as well to help them to understand that this is the tab that was selected and the other tabs are not selected. Finally, we use the tab index to control the focus state because if you look at the W3C docs, it gives you how the interaction should be. And basically, this is how the tab key works. So first, when focus is moving into the tab list, it should place focus on the active tab panel. So basically, let's say you're on a link that is not inside the tab list and you're going to the tab list on your next tab key. It should move focus to the active, that is the keyword there, active tab element. But then when you're already on the active tab element and you press the tab key again, the focus will now move into the tab panel. Unless the first element containing meaningful content inside the tab panel is focusable. So that's another keyword you have to point out there. So the focus should be from the tab list item to the entire tab panel. But if the first element in the tab panel is important or is meaningful, and then it's also focusable, that means it's basically an A tag or a button tag, and that is the first element, then move focus to that first element. But in the case of page builders, we can never ensure that that much. So the best thing to do is just to 
put focus on the tab interface and then let it be like that. Then to move focus between each of the individual tab list items, we use the left and right arrow keys. So that is important here. The tab key is not moving between the tab list items. It's only moving from the tab list item into the tab panel and then away from the tab panel. When you are moving between the tab list items, you should use the left and right arrow keys when it is in the horizontal orientation. Then, if you are using the manual activation, because there are two types, there is the manual activation and then there is the automatic activation. The automatic is preferred, but if you cannot do that, then do the manual activation. If you are using that, then make sure that spacebar or the enter key activates the correct tab panel. Then optionally, you can use the home key to move to the first tab item and then the end key to move to the last tab list item. Then there is some recommendations here. The one that is very important is when a tab list is in the area orientation set to vertical, that means it's in the vertical orientation, then use the up and down arrow keys in place of the left and right arrow keys. So up goes to the previous items, down goes to the next items in the tab list. And then this is a very important bit. If the tab list is horizontal, do not listen for the up and down arrow keys. Those should be left alone because a screen reader user might use it for something else. Even a keyboard user might use it to scroll up and down the page. Do not listen for the up and down arrow keys when you are in the standard horizontal orientation. So those are the things that we need to remember. And then now we'll go ahead and do the keyboard test. Before we go to the keyboard test, we'll start with the mouse and the visual test, which should be relatively easy. All you have to do is make sure that there is a hover state, there is an active state, and that when you click on each of the tab list items, the tab panel is activated. So right now you can see clearly that there is an active state because there is a blue underline that shows the active state, and then it should ideally be thicker. Then you see when I hover, there is the hover state, which shows that there is an item that can be clicked. And when I click on that item, it should be activated. So I'll click on it and you see it activates. So click on the next one, it activates and all of them are working. So that's all for this test. It's quite easy. Just make sure when you click, it activates and that's it. Now we we'll switch over and do the keyboard test. For the keyboard test, we have to make sure we are following the patterns that I showed here. So basically this is the keyboard interaction. If your keyboard is not doing the way this interaction is shown here, then there is a problem. So let's go back and make sure that everything works with that keyboard interaction. We'll start with testing the tab key. So start by pressing the tab key. So we are now currently on a link that is just before the tab interface. And from the docs, it shows that once we press the tab key, it should go to the active tab. So when you press the tab key now, let's see if it goes to the videos tab because that is the currently the active tab. We should not go to the home tab because that is not active. So let's press the tab key. It goes straight to the videos tab. So that means it's working. And then when we press the tab key again, if the first element here is not the focusable element, then it should focus on the tab panel. Let me press the tab key. See, it's focusing on the tab panel and that is how it should work. Next. Since we're now on the tab panel and there is no other focusable element, if we press the tab key again, it should go outside of the tab panel and go to the next section. It should not trap my focus. That is the important thing here. So let me press the tab key. See, it goes to the next section and we are all good. So now that we're done with the tab key, we'll try the shift tab. It should do the reverse. So shift tab, shift tab again, and then shift tab, and it works perfectly. So now we'll test out the left and right arrow keys. So let me first focus on one of the tabs within the tab list, the tab key. So there are two options. If I use the left and right arrow key, you can either have the manual activation or the automatic activation. In this example, I'm using the automatic activation. So when I press the left, it should go to the previous tab and immediately activate it. So when I see, now we're on the home tab and the home tab 
panel is activated. I go to the right, it goes to the videos tab and that is activated. If you keep going, that should always be activated and that's how it should keep going. When we get to the last item, it should cycle back to the first item. So when I press the right arrow key, it goes back to the home tab. It should not just stay at the end. That will cause some confusion. So make sure that it goes in a cycle. So front goes forward. And then now finally, we do the last test, which is the home key and the end key. That is optional. The home key should go to the first item and the end key should go to the last item. If all of that is working, then that's perfect. If you're using the manual activation, then make sure when you press the enter key or the spacebar key, the tab panel is activated. If it doesn't get activated, then know that there is an issue. So now we test the next one, which is the up and down arrow keys. Since this is the horizontal orientation, the up and down arrow key should not perform any function. They should do the standard keyboard functions, which in this case would be to move the focus up and down on your screen. So basically move your screen down and up. It should not start moving your focus to either the previous or the neck tab interface. If it does that, then they have done something wrong with the code. They shouldn't be listening for up and down arrow keys in the horizontal orientation. As you can see, the up key goes up and the down key goes down. And yeah, that's it for the keyboard interaction. The next thing we'll do now is let me show you what they mean when they say the first focusable element. So here we see this tab. If the first focusable element is the first element in the tab panel, that is what they expect to be focused. So if I press the tab key, that is what should be focused. Otherwise, focus on the tab panel. Even if the focusable element is somewhere within the tab panel, as long as it's not the first meaningful element on the panel, then focus on the entire tab panel like this. That is the right way to do it. If you now press tab again, we can now focus on the item that's actually a link. So that's why the best scenario is to just put the tab panel to have the tab index of zero and let it be like that. So the way we do these things is that if you look into the code for all the other items that are not the focused item, we give them a tab index of minus one. So as you can see, the tab items have an index of minus one. Only the active tab has the tab index of zero. That's what makes it get focus from outside of the tab interface into the tab interface. But now when we're in the tab interface, whenever you now use the arrow keys that programmatically gives the tab index of zero to the active tab item. So when you press front, you see the tab index is changing, it keeps changing depending on which one is the active one at that time. So yeah, that is it for the keyboard interaction. Now we test with a screen reader and then we now see how everything ties together. So let me close this. I'll be using NVDA screen reader for this and to activate it, the shortcut key is Control, Alt, and then the N key. So now the screen reader is on. So let me quickly get to the link. Davden web dev, mainland davden.co.uk. So now I'm on the link, which is just before the tab interface. So when I press the tab key, it should give my focus to the playlist and it should inform me of some information that will help me understand where I am. So let me press the tab key now. Davden web dev tab control. Playlists tab selected three of four. So because I gave the tab list a name using IVA label by connected to this Davden web dev, that's why it said Davden web dev. Then it told me it's a tabs control. So immediately I hear tabs control. I know that my keyboard interaction has changed. And then it tells me that we're on the playlist tab and then it's the three out of four. So it gives me enough information to know where I am and how everything is interrelated to each other. So if I press the left arrow key, it should take me to the videos tab. Videos tab selected two of four. And then it tells me two of four, then. Home tab selected one of four. So we have home tab selected one of four. So it should tell you it is selected and it should tell you the number, which is one of four. 
If you're using the manual activation, it won't tell you selected until you press the space bar or enter key, then it will tell you selected. So now, when we press the tab key, let me first use the video ideal playlist one. tab selected three of four. This is the ideal one. So now let me press the tab key. It should take your focus to the first focusable element. So tab key. Playlists property page, the playlist section visited link. So it tells me two information that I need. First, because I have that relationship of the area controls and area labeled by, it tells me that it is the playlist properties page. So I know that I'm in the playlist properties page. And because I'm focusing on a focusable element, it now tells me that playlist section link, which I've already visited. So that's why it gives me all of this information. But if there is no focusable element as the first focusable item on the tab panel, watch what it should say. So let me go back. The playlist section link focused Davden Web Dev tab control videos tab selected two of four. So now this one doesn't have any focusable element. Or because ideally we shouldn't be giving focus to items that don't have interaction, but because that's the only way for a screen reader user to be able to read the item within this tabbed interface, that's why we give it a time index of zero. So we now press the tab. Videos property page, a curated list of my latest videos. So it tells us videos properties page. So because of that relationship, it tells us that it's the videos properties page, but then it starts to read the entire thing which is not ideal, but at least it's better than nothing because there is no other keyboard way to get access to the tab interface unless we're using the up and down arrow key and then we have to go through all of the tab list items before we finally get into the tab interface. And that is not very ideal. So that's why they, in this case, we are permitted to give focus to an element that is not interactable. So that's it. Then... When we press the tab key again, we should go away from the tabbed interface into the next section. Dummy link link. So, and that's how it goes. So now I can exit. Exit NVDA dot. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's exactly how a tabbed interface should work. I'll be going through in the next couple of videos to test different tabbed interfaces for different builders. So, starting with the Bricks builder and the add-ons for bricks then i might go into elemental breakdance and so many other ones and see how they do their own tabbed interface if you have one that you want me to test out please do leave it in the comment section and then i will look into it and i will give my feedback so thanks for watching i hope you have enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>